Hello, and thanks to all of you for joining our webinar today. My name is Katie, and I am with Vanco, an e-giving provider, and we're thrilled to be invited to join today. So thanks to Joe for including Vanco, and we're excited to discuss the topic, Connecting the Parish, Technology Enabling Closer Ties. And I am joined by my colleague, Abby Thompson, and I'll be introducing you to her all shortly. So first on our agenda is welcome and introduction. If you joined a second or two late, my name is Katie and I am a marketing manager here at Vanco, where I've had the pleasure of assisting churches with their e-giving needs and efforts for over 10 years now. We will then be moving into our main presentation, again, talking about virtual giving, the new normal that a lot of parishes are seeing currently. We'll then discuss next steps, and then we will save time at the end for Q&A. So feel free at any time to drop, drop in any questions you have and Abby and I would be happy to answer them for you. So I'm excited to hand it over to Abby to kick us off. She will be discussing virtual ministry. Abby is our Director of Marketing here at Vanco and she does a phenomenal job assisting churches whether they're new to e-giving for the first time or they're longtime veterans just looking to make improvements to their e-giving program, Abby is here to kick us off. So Abby, thanks so much for joining us today and I will hand it over to you. Excellent, thanks so much, Katie. And I just wanna take a quick minute to echo what Katie said, Joe and the entire team behind our webinar today. Thank you so much for inviting Banco and letting us be a part of this conversation. I am so excited to be chatting with all of you about not only virtual ministry, but how this rolls into really connecting with your parish and different ways that you can think about virtual ministry being more than just broad streaming and how to take that beyond broadcasting. So we're gonna start our presentation today by talking about, I like to call it virtual ministry by the numbers. We're gonna take a look at a couple of different studies that we ran back in 2021, taking a look at virtual ministry and how the landscape had changed. All of this content is also found in our virtual church core giving study, which you can find on our Vanco landing page. But what we found when we looked at virtual ministry by the numbers was shocking. We took a look at the data and 93% of church goers agreed that virtual church or online church services made it easier for them to attend. Um, I always love to use the example, Katie and I are located here in Minnesota where we have four very different but lovely seasons. And during the summer, we oftentimes will spend them up at our cabins, enjoying the lake weather and the lovely warm weather outside. But with the emergence of online worship, that's now allowed us to not have to choose between attending service at our local churches or visiting the cabin on the weekends. So really has more opportunities outside of just the pandemic when thinking about how online worship can be a part of your story and how you're connecting with your members. Additionally, more than 70% of churches are now offering virtual activities. These can be things like Bible groups, prayer groups, youth ministry activities. 70% of churches are thinking about how can I expand that beyond just my Sunday service. And this is a great opportunity because again, it takes that factor of commuting out of participation. So somebody can log into a Bible study while they are on their lunch break or a break from work. And then once that wraps, they can take a minute to digest what they had a chance to discuss and then get back into their work day. So we've really seen with the churches that we've worked with, their participation and engagement in Bible studies and prayer groups increase as they've rolled out those virtual options. Additionally, more than a third of virtual churchgoers plan to continue attending virtually after COVID-19 subsides. And this is something where, again, people are starting to have this become a part of their daily schedule and their routine. And it's something that they're looking to continue moving forward. And then lastly, and this is one that we'll touch on a little bit later in our presentation, especially with Katie, but 
48% of virtual churchgoers felt neither engaged nor disengaged during virtual services. And we're going to talk about, again, as we go forward, how the correct tool can help empower you and other members within your church to drive engagement and make that online service feel more of a um, situation where your members are able to engage and interact within that session versus it feel more like they're watching a TV show or looking into the church from outside a window. And then what we have found from our research, um, some of you may be using these tools today, some of you may be using other tools. The most popular virtual ministry tools that we saw in our research were YouTube, Zoom, and Facebook. So again, three great tools that you can use to get your message across. But one of the key reasons why we're gathered here today is to talk about how can we help you with elevating your online ministry or your virtual ministry. So you may have started something, you're continuing to maintain it, but now that this is becoming a part of that ongoing routine, what are some ways that you can help to elevate the conversation and the experience for your members? Well, the first thing we highly encourage you to think about is how can I create an online worship that is as dynamic and inclusive as when everyone was in the sanctuary together? And we're gonna, again, talk about some different ways that you can do that here in just a minute. And then additionally, how am I thinking about giving? And is there a way that I can make all forms of giving easy for guests and members, no matter where they are? So again, I highly encourage you, take a second and reflect on your online ministry experience today and think about if I am a viewer watching online service, maybe for the first time, or I'm a member who's joining virtually, how would I interact with that service? And then if somebody in the service talks about a mission that I feel passionate about and I'm moved to give, what steps would I be required to take in order to give to that mission? And does that require me to leave that service in order to complete that gift and act on my generosity? All right, so the next item we're gonna talk about here is virtual services are offered nationwide. So again, lots of great information here. What we've seen is that online streaming is the most popular way to attend services with 74% of virtual churchgoers saying that they attend live services online compared to just 13% who watch recorded services. So we are often seeing that even though people may be attending online, they are choosing to still make that an event within their house. So they're logging in when your service is happening, they're still carving out that time on Sunday mornings. They're just doing it someplace that's physically not within your building. And then again, as we had talked about earlier, more than 70% of churches are now offering virtual activities like Bible studies and prayer groups within their church. One other item I want to touch on here, another trend that we've seen emerge, is that worshiping online offers new experiences and it allows attendance to remain strong. Again, when we talked to those virtual churchgoers over 2021, we really saw that 69% of virtual churchgoers attended service at the same frequency or more often than they attended in person. So again, having that ability to log in and join that service from anywhere really allowed them to keep their attendance consistent and make this a part of their routine regardless of where they were located. And then additionally, making giving easy was something that came across during our uh, survey that we did, but also to a great way that you can make sure you're connecting with your parish. We've seen a lot change in the world of online giving over the past three years. Starting with um, paper checks have dropped 50% in the last 15 years, and we expect the use of paper checks to continue to drop here over the next few years as well. Additionally, setting up online giving, what we've seen with churches that we partner with, especially those who don't have some type of online giving program in place already, 
can result in an average increase of 26% in total giving. Now I'm gonna to touch on the next slide, a big key driver behind why that increase on average of 26% occurs. And then lastly, similar to how you would um, dress giving in your in-person services, make sure you're thinking about how you can express gratitude before, during, and after the offering. One of the most common feedback that we get, especially from younger generations that are starting to get into the act of generosity, is that they're interested in how their funds are being used and what are the outcomes of the funds that they've donated. So again, the more you can do in terms of communicating that gratitude, but also to providing feedback on what occurred, the more you're going to see givers return to continue to give to your causes and support your church. So I mentioned earlier that when we have new online givers, especially those that are new to online giving as a church, come into the Vanko family, we see on average an increase of 26% in their online giving. And a big part of this comes from online giving's ability to set up a recurring gift. So when we took a look at Philanthropy News Digest, we learned that monthly givers donate 440% more over their lifetime than one-time donors. And a big part of this is that ability to set a gift and have it be given as you intend to give without life getting in the way. While it may not be our intention, we all have busy lifestyles. Um, sometimes family members get sick or other obligations pop up and you're not able to make it on Sunday, or maybe you forget your checkbook or your cash and you don't have the donation on hand that you were intending to give. With the act of online giving, you can choose to set up a recurring gift that again, allows you to donate as you are intending to give with that frequency. And you can still interact during the offertory moment in a variety of different ways, depending on what your church has available be that through online giving cards, online giving placards, tokens, something to still have you involved in that offertory moment, but allowing that gift to be something that is already set up and is coming out of either your checking account, your savings account, a credit or a debit card. And again, we see that recurring giving really does help keep church culture alive, be that either while members are on vacation, while they're attending virtually, um, or really just whatever makes the most sense for them. And this is something, whether it's recurring donations or online giving in general, that can be used for a variety of different sources, be that donations, pledges, church fees, all of those and more are something that can be added to your online giving tool. And the last thing I'm gonna to touch on here um, before we kind of start to transition into talking about some tools that can help you with connecting and engaging within your parish is this idea of offset fees. So with online giving, there is a processing fee that is related to those gifts, but with the right giving tool, you can choose to allow your members to offset those card processing fees through an offset fee. They're gonna get credit for that full gift, including the offset fee on their end of year contribution statement. And you as a church are gonna get more of that full gift that they're intending. Going back to those studies that we've done in the past, what we've seen is that 83% of electronic givers do cover that fee when they're presented with the opportunity and are educated on what that means for both themselves and the church. So, so much of online giving success does come down to communication. So I highly encourage you throughout your online giving process and also to throughout your online worship process to be communicating about the tools you have, how your members can use them effectively, and then the impact that that has for the church from there. So again, as we transition into tools, a big part of what we were talking about today is 48% of online worshipers feel neither connected nor disconnected during online service. So I'd love for you to think, as we walk through these next few slides, what if you could create an interactive virtual environment 
online environment to help your members feel engaged and connected during service. What could that mean for you, your members, new members logging in for the first time? How could that help you impact the percentage of viewers who say that they feel engaged and connected during your service? Well, we are really excited to say here at Banco, the wait is over. We now have released Banco Live, which is our online streaming um, service that wraps around what you're utilizing for online streaming today to help your online worshipers feel connected and do everything that they could do in person, be that communicate with others, see important notes, give in the moment when they are moved to give without ever having to navigate to a different window or a different tab. So again, really excited to be sharing this with you, those different ways that you can engage and communicate with your members and really go beyond uh, broadcasting. So like we talked about and like Katie is going to show here in just a few minutes, Bank Alive allows you to easily focus your viewers' attention on your sermon, your learning materials, and the causes they care about. It's going to allow you to facilitate a role of a digital usher to interact with members of the church community throughout the password-protected in-event chat room. And as always important, it's going to be easy to set up. So Bank Alive, again, is going to work with those streaming tools that you are already using today in order to build that wrapper of engagement and generosity during your service. And for your members, there's a lot of benefits as well. You're going to be able to support the church without getting lost on other screens and giving up or getting distracted. And then additionally, you'll be able to keep your commitment. The learning and giving experience is always going to be there for your members throughout the week. So if for some reason they're not able to attend at the time of service, they can come back, watch that experience later, and then as appropriate, engage with the services as well. So I am, again, beyond excited to be tossing things here back to Katie. She's going to take a little bit of time to walk us through, again, how with this new Vanco Face Suite, you can tell your story, inspire generosity and engagement with Vanco Faith and the tools that we have available. So Katie, I am going to send this back to you. Excellent. Thanks so much, Abby. And let me start by sharing. Can you see my screen okay? Yes, looks great. Wonderful. Well, thank you again to all of you for joining our call today. I want to start by showing you VancoValleyChurch.com. Feel free to jot this down or type this into your browser and follow along with me. And like Joe said, you'll get a recording too, so you can always come back to this section and follow along with me later on. So I'm going to start by showing you a demo teaching site Vanco has built to share some best practices. And here at Vanco, we simply use the website builder using an easy to use template. So you'll see some recommendations here at the top. Again, this page was designed to help churches that are considering a website for the first time, or perhaps they've had the same website for 10 years now, for example, and they're really looking to make some enhancements, improvements to uh, better connect with their members or allow members to uh, tune in virtually. So like Abby said, uh, Vanco Live, as well as virtual ministry, has really uh, reshaped a church's online worship experience. And I want to quickly show you what it looks like when plugged into your website. So with Vanco Live, it brings your sanctuary online, allowing members to focus on your services, give to their favorite funds, for example, and interact all on the same page. So let's say it's Sunday morning and you are doing both in-person and a virtual service. You would simply plug in your virtual service to your website. So you could then direct your members to come to your website, locate the watch live services, so you can have uh, members tuning in both virtually and in person. What I love about this is it really allows you to customize it to your liking. So 
This could be a message of gratitude from your pastor. It could be a note about the upcoming service, uh, the song choices, the readings, everything can be listed here under uh, August 2nd, 2022, for example. On the right-hand side is a way where you can engage with your members further. So I wanna log in so you can see what this looks like here. So when we click watch live services, I'm getting an error message, my apologies. Watch live services, it allows you to chat in. And I'm gonna click out some of these errors. Sometimes when I'm in demo mode, it gives me an error message. But right here on the uh, right-hand side, my apologies again, uh, it allows you to connect with members. So chatting with them, uh, we also have the give function as well. So just really great ways for your members to come to your website, chat, as well as give all from the same page. Real briefly now, I wanna show you what it's like to give as well. So we have all these great uh, funds or tiles here, and it really allows customization to the church. Abby and I came out here recently, we updated the funds, uh, as we know, uh, we don't necessarily always want to have a vacation Bible school fund out here or an Easter fund. So we come out here month after month, edit it to the time of the year that we're in or the uh, season we are in in the church. So if you want to make a donation to Sunday offering, we could click the button, make a donation. And then it is paired with a description here as well. Welcome, Vanco Valley Community Church offers members and visitors an easy and convenient way to support us. We encourage you to make your gift online, whether you attend services in person or virtually. This is a great way for you to put a personal, um, personalize the message to your church. Like I said, me message from your pastor, a note of gratitude, how the donation is being used at the church, really up to, up to you to customize it to your liking. So if I wanna make a Sunday offering contribution, I can make it $50, for example. I know a lot of churches right now are busy prepping for their stewardship campaign or their stewardship drive. And like Abby said, it's really easy for your members to commit to a recurring giving schedule. So you're not having to make that ask um, as frequently to give. We want it to be every two weeks, for example, and we have the donation starting this Friday. Before moving forward with my donation, it offers more ways to give, whether I wanna to give to the playground fund or the food shelf donations, just another uh, simple way for your members, your visitors, or your community members to support the parish. I'll then quickly, uh, easily click continue to review. What I'm showing you now is what it looks like as a for, uh, returning giver. My card information is already saved. However, I could also choose to give from my checking or savings account. So really allowing your members to choose the payment method that best fits their needs. We can then contribute 3% extra to help cover the processing fees. So it takes a donation from $50 to $51.50. We simply then click continue to review. So there you are, it allows me to make a recurring automated gift to help support the church. This could be for the stewardship drive. This could be for the second half giving of the year. Uh, your, choose, your church gets to choose those different fund options. So one question I often get before I turn it back to Abby is this looks great for our church members and our visitors, but what does this look like for our church staff, our volunteers, our committee members? Is this easy to manage? Well, uh, behind the scenes is what we refer to as my Vanco. You'll see all these tiles or giving funds listed here. So then you can uh, come out at any time, organize your tiles, turn off tiles depending on the time of the year. You can also create a new tile. So let's create a gift or a payment related tile. I could 
for example, create a stewardship tile, for example, stewardship campaign, uh, fall festival. I know that is a very big event for churches as well. So just some ideas for you as you create um, funds throughout the year. Now on the left-hand side, you'll see a couple different ways that you can uh, make customizations to your tools, whether that is Vanco Online or Vanco Live. So remember, I demonstrated for you Vanco Valley Community Church. There are different tiles, like I said, so you could customize them to your liking. You can then uh, select site settings and update the name, for example, or enable or disable social sharing. When I say social sharing, this is simply allowing your members to share on their social media platform that they are supporting the church as a way to engage other members to do the same. All right, the last question I often get is, how do I get these Watch Live Services or Give Now button on our website? You can simply go to Actions, Copy Site Link, send it to your webmaster or your volunteer, and then you have the button present on your website, making it easy for your members and your visitors to watch live services and to give in the moment, all from simply visiting your website. Like Joe said, we have a Q&A box open for you, so if you have any questions on this process, please don't hesitate to answer them. Back to you, Abby. Excellent. I'm gonna reshare my screen here. And just a few last minute things I wanna touch on because I know we were having a few technical problems with our demo site here. But like Katie mentioned, um, our two buttons up here in the corner, thinking about using both giving and your online services as ways that you can connect with your parish and drive engagement. And those can be through a variety of different ways. So again, as we go back to this um, view of Vanco Live and the idea of using that wrapper around your streaming service in order to drive engagement, we have items like a chat box that you can keep open to welcome faces as they come um, during service, but also use this as a response channel. If there are questions that you are throwing out to members as you are facilitating your worship, think about um, how can you have an opportunity to use that as a way to facilitate discussions. Additionally, as we scroll down, you can see here, we have notes that are available underneath our um, our screen as well. So this is a great way where you can take an opportunity in order to talk with others in your service about maybe upcoming events, share readings, share songs that you're gonna be singing. How can you utilize all of those items in order to effectively communicate um, those that are viewing and give them that same experience as having something like a physical bulletin that they might receive when they come to service on Sunday. The last thing I'll mention again, because giving is a is a big part of engagement when you think about your members attending both in person and virtually, is that ability to be able to give either by clicking this button up on the upper right hand corner or over on the side. And this is where you're gonna have the opportunity to see any of those giving or payment tiles that are visible within your church for individuals to dig in and learn a little bit more about. So a member who is attending online service is gonna be able to view the tile, again, make a gift, add it to their basket, check out without ever having to leave service. So you can have that offertory moment, encourage people both in person and online to give if they're moved to give and then allow them to have that space to do so. The last thing I wanna to touch on before we hop back to our deck um, and talk a little bit about one last item as it relates to some challenges we hear from churches, but also to um, the great questions that you all have been submitting throughout our presentation is our online giving page is such a great way to connect with your parish and truly use this as an opportunity to tell your story. 
each of you out there is doing so many great and unique things within your community and it can be a great way to bring new members in and have them become long-term engaged in ex existing members or also too for them to get introduced to new people from there so one of a one of the great examples i love to point out during our conversations is this food shelf donations again allows you to put pictures in here we know pictures tell um, or pictures worth a thousand words they can be your own pictures they could be pictures that we help you source through a connection we have built into the product but also to utilizing this space down here to really explain the why behind that drive for support what you are either hoping to accomplish with it or if it's something that you've done in the past what you have accomplished and the outcome of that again to provide that detail back to those prospective members or those prospective donors of what they're going to impact here moving forward so again just a number of really great ways that you can help to drive engagement regardless of if people are in um, your church or joining online so the last thing we're going to touch on here before we get into some recommended next steps and our question and answer session is, I know this might not seem like it relates to connecting with your parish, but here at Banco over the years, we have heard from so many churches about how manual and tedious the process of reconciling donations can be. We've worked with churches where this process has taken them multiple days in order to download all those donations, hand key them into their church management software, and then get those updates out to individuals. Well, here at Banco, it's been one of our goals to assist with that over the 20 years that we've been in business. And today we're proud to say we integrate with over 60 church management softwares to make that process a three-step process, import, review, and post. And have helped multiple churches take this from a multi-day to a multi-hour process again allowing you more time back in the day for you to focus on engaging and how you want to connect with prospective current and long time members within your parish so i highly encourage you if you have questions on that drop them in the question in the chat box and we'll talk to those later so before we get into our questions section um, one last thing i want to touch on is some recommended next steps if you are interested in either um, driving more engagement, whether that is through your online giving or your virtual ministry or increasing generosity within your church, we'd love to talk with you. And one of the key ways that we start with that is just through a personalized demonstration, or I like to call it a consultation. So in this, we'll talk about whether it's your online giving platform, your current live streaming process, provide you with some ways that we here at Banco think we can help you with, again, making generosity and engagement front and center. And then we're gonna help you select the right tools from the Banco Face Suite and set those up so you feel supported and are ready to launch those to your members. Once those have been set up, you're gonna be paired with our launch team that's gonna walk you through our best steps for launching your online giving, how to communicate about that, and that's going to help you with raising that awareness with your members and increasing donations. So we'd love to help anybody who's interested with walking through that three-step process. So again, feel free to drop your contact information or your church name and your name in the question box or the chat box, and we would be um, happy to get in touch with you. So like I mentioned, I know that there have been so many great questions that have popped into our question box as we've been talking. We are gonna touch on those, but I'm gonna keep this screen up in the interim. So that way, if you guys are looking to get in touch with us, you can take a minute and um, write our contact information down. So I'm gonna transition us over into our question section and katie i don't know if you've got a question teed up that we want to start with absolutely we've had some really great questions so i'm looking forward to this segment 
First one here is from Angie. We currently use Vanco and have ACS software. Does this service somehow integrate with ACS? Absolutely. So we have a, a really great integration with ACS Technologies. One of, they're one of our main partners when it comes to importing your donations for a really seamless back office um, integration. So yes, feel free to contact us. We'd be happy to talk to you about the specifics of the integration, but we have a lot of mutual clients that really enjoy the import process. And that we had another similar question if we um, integrate with Realm. So Realm is a product of ACS Technologies, and yes, we integrate with them as well, along with about 60 other church management software. So happy to talk with you further, learn more about your specific software partner and help you learn more about the integration. Another question here is, it looks like you've made it easy for people to donate and chat during the service. Have you included ways to share the bulletin and the music for the hems in your live platform? This would be an important addition way to help uh, attendees feel engaged. Yes. So. One way you can uh, achieve this is in that section under underneath the screen, you can, you're more than welcome to link to your bulletin uh, or on the right hand side of your screen under the chat feature, you could chat out the hymn names, you could chat out a link to the bulletin, upcoming events, that chat is really there for you to communicate anything you want out to your virtual attendees. And yes, back to the integration question, someone said, same for Power Church. Yes, Audrey, we also integrate with Power Church. It works very similar to Realm or ACS technologies. Abby, are you seeing any other questions here? Yeah, it's a couple early on questions that I want to take a, a minute to address. Um, we had a, a great question coming in here asking about the stats, if they were based on a particular denomination or geographic location. So one of the great things about the churchgoer giving study that I mentioned we were pulling the majority of this information from is it is a third party study that we do that surveys a thousand churchgoers across the United States and across Christian denominations. So it is not specific to a certain geographic region or specific denomination. We really do try to get a widespread of both denominations, location, age demographics. And then the one caveat I'll give is for our virtual church goer giving study, there were, um, let me call them entrance requirements. So in order to take the study, you did have to participate in a certain number of virtual services over a specific period of time. With our church goer giving study, it was both virtual and people who chose to worship in person. So great question there. Um, and like I said, I hope that provides some clarity on who we were talking to. Otherwise, we'd love to share those surveys with you um, and talk a little bit more about that data from there. The other one I want to address is we did get a question in here. Are these statistics from 2022? If not, how have these statistics changed between 2020, 2021, when a lot of worship was stay at home and um, now when things have opened up more? Really great question. So all the data that you are seeing is from our latest survey that we did, which was looking at 2020-2021 information. We're really excited to hopefully do another survey here soon to see how that has changed and how it has compared. But I'd love to share with you just some anecdotal feedback that we've heard from others in the community as we've been going through our series about talking with um, worship leaders and what they're seeing for trends. So. While there are many people who are excited to get back to service in person, they are still seeing within their communities that online worship is something that people are continuing to um, engage in and utilize. And that's for a variety of different reasons. As we talked about earlier, sometimes people just aren't physically present and are able to attend service in person. So having that other alternative option to rely on so they can still participate in worship is something that they are looking um, looking forward to having. The other group of individuals that we talked about that I think is 
just such a new perspective on online worship is this group of individuals who are not yet comfortable with returning in person, be that because they're at a spiritual level where they're not comfortable joining in the church yet or for a variety of other reasons, they would not worship if um, online services were not an option to them. So I think while we will see, I think the percentage of those that are joining online versus in person um, start to more level out since there was a time when it was required that you could only join online, not in person. I do think we'll continue to see online service forever be a part of the story of the church and just a different way that some um, demographics want to be able to, to participate and engage with your services. So two really great questions from there. Excellent. Well, I am going to move us forward here for just a second uh, before we take a minute to um, kind of wrap up and close. But I've talked a lot about these surveys that we did here at Vanco, our virtual churchgoer giving study and the churchgoer giving study. Both of these are available for you to download on our resource center, vancopaymentscom slash egiving slash resources. So again, I highly encourage you take a second, visit our resource center if you are interested in downloading those or engaging with those. Um, we'd love to let you um, engage and digest the facts and findings that we found. Additionally, if you're interested in learning out learning more or have questions for us, you can always give us a call. 800-675-7430, option two, is the best way to get in touch with our giving consultants. Or you can always visit us online at bankopaymentscom slash egiving. Awesome. One other note that I just saw in the chat here that I think is so phenomenal. Um, one of you mentioned we found that some of our online participants come to us from our website and check us out online before deciding to come in person. And that's so true. We've really seen that, especially with people who are new to different areas or maybe just starting to come back to church using online as that entrance point. So again, just another great way to think about what is that experience for somebody who's joining online for the first time? How are you working to welcome them, make their experience feel cohesive? and making it an engaged and positive experience that they want to come back and utilize again. The last thing I'm going to mention before I toss it over to Katie for any last questions and closing comments is for those of you who are asking about the recording or slides, Joe has done a great job of summarizing that in the questions box or the chat box, sorry. So you can take a look at that um, for where you can go after our presentation to see the recording or get our slides as well. So Katie, with that, I'll toss it back over to you. Thanks so much, Abby. And I wanted to say a special welcome or a special thanks to Joe for doing such a warm welcome to Abby and myself. We are thrilled to spend a little time with you today. And I hope you take away some information regarding virtual uh, ministry and giving and know that Vanco is here to help you with any of your e-giving or virtual ministry needs. And we hope to chat with you soon. Take care. Thanks, everyone.